Hey guys, it is me again as you can probably tell. Today's Monday, January 24th. That is day 24 on our Project Serve Him More 2011. Uh, guys, I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, this is take two. And I know some of you uh, sharp-eyed uh, people are, well not necessarily sharp-eyed, but good listeners are probably saying, now, wait a minute, you said you weren't going to do no more two and three takes and all this stuff. Well, that's right. I'm not going to, you know, because of uh, it's too long or whatever. But this one couldn't be helped, guys. I was in the middle of making the first vid, and uh, <clears throat> let's just say uh, uh, nature called, and uh, it couldn't be helped. I tried to, <laughs> I tried to hold it and just couldn't, so... Uh, Anyway, I had to stop it. I said, "Well, you know, I'll just, uh, I'll just have to pray that the Holy Spirit will, will, will lead me twice." But uh, it is good to see you guys tonight. I'm gonna try to make this as quick as I can. I, I just wanted, I wanted to say a couple things. Uh, a lot of you guys have been messaging me and asking me about my my deal I mentioned the other night about you know me going to meet with the bankruptcy lawyer tomorrow. So pray for me on that. Uh, I'm gonna to try to kind of explain that here in just a second. Um, I did want to say first though that I wanted to thank you guys for praying number one for the lady that I talked about yesterday um, I'll be honest my church surprised me uh, I was kind of figuring we wouldn't have much you know uh, wouldn't have much of a turnout on the food drive for this woman but uh, dad went up there a while ago he, he was going to the store to uh, Food City to, to get some stuff we needed and uh, the church is, you know, right next, right on the way to Food City. So he he said, I'll run by church while I'm out and see how many, you know, how much food has been brought. So he come back and said that there was quite a bit. He's we've got a bunch of, you know, uh, probably three or four pretty big tables in the uh, dining area. You know, like when we have dinners and things. And uh, he said two of the the big tables was full of food and and just stuff everywhere. And he said somebody had even left a ten dollar bill. Uh, and, you know, I guess a note saying give it to her. So uh, we're going to try to maybe tomorrow evening, uh, me and Dad are going to try to get together with the other brother that knows where she lives. To be honest, I, at first I was just going to try to see if he would run it all over there, the brother that knows where she lives, you know. But the Holy Spirit got to convicted me on that, number one, just for just trying to put too much on him, you know. Uh and then, you know, just also for just, you know, I'm the pastor, you know, I, I need to be, uh, you know, he just, I need to go, I need to go, you know, I need to go uh, see where this woman lives and, and help take her, the, help take the food to her. Uh, so the Lord's convicted me of that. So, you know, anyway, we're going to try to do that tomorrow evening, guys. So just pray for me on that. You normal stuff, guys. I want to get this out of the way before I forget it. Pray for me, my family, my church, my business. Today wasn't a bad day for a Monday uh, anymore. Uh, I mean, wasn't no big record-breaking day, but uh, it was better than last Monday. Uh, so guys, already this week, it started out better, so praise the Lord for that. He's a miracle-working God. Um, I just turned in a ticket to a company for almost $500, uh, but, you know, it's the company that I always tell you guys about that drag their feet so bad about paying me. So they already owe me about 400 for another ticket, and this five, and then they owe me for an old ticket that they won't pay me for about 200. So right there, you know, that's over a thousand dollars they owe me, uh, plus another thousand on another deal that I'm making uh, on some tickets that I, I've still got to send them. So uh, you know, if I can just get them turned in, uh, I, I'm waiting on the guy up there to approve them and give me the truck numbers and all that. Uh, if I can just get him to do that, you know, so I can get them in, you know, maybe. But, but I mean seriously, it'll probably be up. It'll be end of end of February, probably March, getting paid for this stuff. So uh, just pray that that they can get these things turned. That he will turn these things in quicker and get me paid. But guys, I've got faith that 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 business is going to be better this week. I do want you guys to pray about one specific car for me. Well, too, we've we've got a Honda and they're doing a head gasket job on it. Pray for that car. Uh, I'm not really running any problems yet, but on a job that big, you just always need help. Uh, and and the brother that actually I was just talking about that that helps me at church, he's a trustee. We've got his car down there. 
It's got a fuel injector sticking on it, trying to stay on all the time, trying to squirt too much fuel. And uh, I put a fuel injector in it today because I thought that was it, and it ended up not being the problem. I thought it was mechanically stuck, and it's electrically stuck. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure the computer's out of the car, and uh, you know I'm probably going to have to order a computer for it tomorrow, but you guys just pray about that. Pray that the Lord will guide me on this car because he's struggling financially right now too, just like we are and a lot of people. And you know, I, I you know, <clears throat> it puts extra pressure on me when people, when I'm working on people's cars that really can't afford to be working on them. So every dollar you spend, you know, that don't fix the car, you know, it just makes me feel bad. So pray about that. Anyway, guys, I wanted to get on this deal, tell you about the bankruptcy deal. Uh, and I'm going to try to make this quick. Mad Bad Voodoo already knows this. Me and Richard already talked about it. Uh, but I, as far as I can remember, the rest of you guys don't know. In 2002, when I bought this new Dodge diesel truck that I've got now, right after I bought that, I had I had great credit back then. Right after I bought that truck, <clears throat> I got a Visa or MasterCard. I don't remember which one it was, to be honest, guys. From U.S. No, Bank of America, I think. I don't even remember. See, uh, through Chrysler. It was sponsored by Chrysler. $10,000 credit limit. Anyway, you know, I got into the drugs and stuff. Got into the Oxycontin and all that stuff. So over the course of the next couple years, three years probably, that card was used a lot for cash advances. You know, when I didn't have the money to buy my fix with. Um, you know, so I run it up pretty much maxed it out. <clears throat> This is up to about 2005 or 2006. Uh, anyway, but at this time, we were still making, I was still making personally, I was still making probably $120,000, $150,000 a year, me, myself. This is when business was booming. We were selling four-wheelers, ATVs. I was paying the payment, no problem, even though, uh, you know, I had had a drug problem, which at this time I, I'd quit. Uh, but still, you know, I was, I was paying the payment because I was making big money. Uh, my bank cut my floor plan off where I was selling my four wheelers and motorcycles on it. I really can't go into details on that. Just it wasn't our fault. A local car dealer shucked the bank for a lot of money. Uh, so they basically just said, "Well, we're we're not going to do floor plans anymore since we got burnt." They cut everybody's floor plan off, so instantly they cut sixty to eighty thousand dollars worth of income off me like that. I mean, up to this time, I I never struggled for money. I never struggled in business. I mean, you know, when I, when I was selling these four-wheelers and, and motorcycles and had this floor plan, you know, like I said, I was making over $100,000 a year, just me, myself. Uh, never struggled, never worried about money. Well, anyway, one fell swoop, they cut my income down to nothing, basically. No other banks with floor plan used to ATVs and motorcycles, and that's what we specialized in. So anyway, when they, when they took this floor plan away from me, pretty much destroyed my business. I mean, to be honest about it, I've struggled ever since. I mean, up until then, business was good. Ever since then, we've struggled. Uh, I've joked about it sometimes, and I know I shouldn't do it, but that if I was a Muslim instead of a Christian, I'd walk into the bank with a bomb strapped to me, and I'd blow them all up, but, uh, you know, just joking. But anyway, I had to quit paying the payment. I mean, like I said, it, it was down to the point now to where I didn't have the money to pay the payment with. You know, I went from, like I said, I went from making six figures down to making, you know, from, from 100000 at least down to 15000 You know, so I went from having plenty of money and doing what I wanted to barely being able to feed my family. So I had to quit paying the payment. So I just quit paying it because everybody my whole life told me, don't worry about a credit card payment. There's nothing they can do to you anyway. That's why they're allowed to charge such big high interest rates. Blah, blah, blah. They can't do nothing. They can't come get nothing. There's nothing they can do to you. So I had to, I, I quit paying it. I had to quit paying it. Well, anyway, during this time after this happened, I, you know, is when I truly really got saved. Well, like I said, this was like in 06, 05 or 06, 06, I think. Well, it went from 06 to this last summer, over four years, and I never heard from anybody. So I said, well, maybe they're not going to do anything to me. Well, I started getting the letters this last summer. 
that they were going to take me to court and this and that. That and I and this uh, this new company I don't even remember the name of this company that I think has bought my debt. This is it's not Bank of America. It's not the same old you know people. So anyway, I start getting these letters and this and that, and so we've we've already had to go to court once, and we had it squashed because I don't know they didn't even show up. But anyway, they keep coming after me. I've had to answer depositions. I've had to answer questions about this and that. They're trying to get a judgment against me right now, which I can't. Which that's what I'm gonna ask this bankruptcy lawyer tomorrow. I I, I get different answers on what a judgment is if they can do anything to me. Some people say they can't do anything to you. They can't take anything. They can't force you to sell anything. They maybe can put a lien on your property or something, but that's about it. If you're not gonna sell, that don't matter. So anyway. That's what I'm forced with, guys. They're driving me crazy. They're calling 20 and 30 times a day. I'm always getting letters that I got to go to court. I got to do this and I got to do that. I've had to hire a lawyer. I mean, it's just, it's driving me crazy. And I've got another credit card, too, that I had during this time, a $2,000 one. They've also got me in court, uh, maybe small claims court or something. It's a lower court. Uh, I've got a big hospital bill that I've been paying on. It's like a ten thousand dollar hospital bill that i've been sending them a hundred bucks a month i've got other doctors that i owe for when i got put in the hospital so i think maybe my best bet may be just file bankruptcy you know my credit's already ruined because of uh you know not paying these credit card payments so i'm gonna see tomorrow guys so that's that's basically my thing i just wanted to tell you guys god has forgiven me for these things i know it you know even though i shouldn't have done them but, you know, because God forgives you don't mean that man will. So I hope you guys will forgive me for it. I hope you guys will not hold it against me. Um, just pray for me that, that God will let happen what, you know, what needs to happen. So, uh, you know, you guys, if, you, if you've got any more questions about it, that's something you don't understand or whatever, message me or whatever, and, and, I'll, and I'll explain it to you. But anyway, guys, let's get to the important part tonight, and that is, of course, God's Word. Um... Mark chapter 5, verse 35. I just wanted to let you guys know that real quick. You know, what was going on and why that I was thinking about filing bankruptcy. And uh, Mad Bad Voodoo, Brother Richard, I do appreciate you for all your advice the other night. I really do. And uh, and Mark, Woody, uh, I just read your email that you sent me, and I appreciate that too. That, that, that gives me a little bit of, I mean, that helps me, you know. So anyway, Mark chapter 5, verse 35, here we go, guys. While yet, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, The daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any farther? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept, and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado? And weep, the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel. And them that were with him, and entered into where the damsel was lying. <laughs> and he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talitha Kuma which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And, there, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something be given to her to eat. You know, guys, it, you can see the, the, the trend here with Jesus telling people not to tell these things that I'm doing. Because it just wasn't time. It wasn't time for it to be known who he was. You know, he, he still had a lot of preaching. He had a lot of the gospel to spread. You know, if it would have gotten out too early. Which, of course, most people, if you notice, most people that he told not to say anything about it, they didn't pay no attention to him. They went out and told it anyway. But uh, we do that with the Lord, don't we? Most of the time it's him telling us not to do things. It's telling, him, uh, telling us not to sin, and we do it anyway. But anyway, guys. Um, I hope you guys will see this pretty soon. I was looking on YouTube a while ago. I guess they're doing maintenance because I went to uh, to see if I could upload this, and it said that right now they were in read-only mode or whatever, and you know that you could go ahead and upload your video, but it wouldn't be posted until they got done. So I don't know how long it'll be before you guys see this, 
But uh, I love you guys. Good Lord willing, I'll be here tomorrow night. Just pray for me tonight, guys. Pray that, that, that you know, I'm just scared about this bankruptcy deal. I'm scared that she's going to want more money than what I can. As a matter of fact, right now, I can't come up with anything. You know, I'm just hoping that she can maybe take payments on the bankruptcy. I don't know if they do that or not. Uh, you know, and I just need to find everything out. So anyway, guys, pray for me. Pray for my business this week. I love you guys for having such faith and being good prayer warriors. So until I see you guys tomorrow, good night and God bless.